Today on The Journey, we'll be talking about how to give a presentation your audience will love. So don't panic, but in order to actually capture your audience's attention, you'll have to do it in the first 30 seconds. Yeah, recent studies show that you lose people within the first minute. So if you don't have something eye-catching or have a great message or really dynamic, you're gonna lose them to those digital distractions. They're gonna look at their phone. They're just not gonna pay attention. They're gonna take a nap, whatever. And that's not what you want because you spend a lot of time on this presentation. So we have a few tips on how to hijack a person's flighty focus and really capture their attention. So the first thing you wanna do is to frame your story. And I love to do this by starting with a story. I feel that stories are so engaging. We love hearing people tell stories about themselves or made up stories, whatever it is. Just tell a little short story that talks about the key points that you're talking about in your presentation. So that way it's relatable when you bring it back. And when it's being relatable, you wanna make sure that you're not expecting people to know everything that you do, but make sure that you're speaking, not using jargon, mm -mm. but able to can be completely understood. So when I develop my keynote speeches, this is how I do it. In the first 30 seconds, I tell them exactly what I'm gonna talk about and what is gonna be beneficial to them. So talking about organizations and institutions isn't always enjoyable by others. So you wanna make sure <laughs> that you're telling stories mm -hmm. and you know coming up with things that are you know relatable. Okay, so we know that we're gonna capture their attention within the first 30 seconds, maybe with a story, but then what are we gonna do for the rest of our talk? How are we going to plan our delivery? There's a couple ways you can do that. One, you can read directly from a script or a teleprompter. Mm -hmm. However, we don't really suggest doing that because it can make you disconnected. And even if you use a teleprompter, people can find and discover that you're really reading and then they'll zone out. We've all watched videos or even the news, and you can tell when someone's reading off a teleprompter, and it's really distracting because you actually kind of focus on their eyes and you just see them going back and forth. And also you can come off very dry and stiff and, and robotic. You don't seem like a natural person. So if that's your style, great, but be aware that that could be one of the cons of doing it that way. Exactly, but the next thing that you could do, you can actually have some bullet points that you know you're gonna have it to structure your talk and you know your bullet point is going to let you know what to talk about next. This is actually my favorite way to give a presentation because not only can I structure my, my slides in that way where I just have quick bullet points that the people can read and then they can focus back on me, but also it gives me a little bit of flexibility that if I wanna change things up in the moment, I'm not so freaked out when I, I go off script and then I won't know what to do. Exactly. And then the next way is just remember your whole speech word for word. Memorize the whole thing. <laughs> exactly. Some of the best speakers, TEDx talks, you will find them just going straight from memory. Nothing shown on a slide, nothing as a presentation. And some of those talks are very engaging because they're focused on the audience and making that connection. And the next thing is your tone. And you may want to come across as an orator and sounding as if you're you know, having flowery language and coming across as if you're on a stage play. That may not necessarily go over too well with a lot of audiences. A conversational tone is so much better. Again, talking about those TED Talks, some of the best presenters just had a conversation like Steve Jobs and the audience stayed engaged. So find the personal style that works for you and really hone in on that delivery. Next is stage presence. For a lot of inexperienced speakers, this is a major point of focus. However, don't be so hard on yourself. The more important thing is having your speech and your words come out clearly. Obviously, if you're new to presenting, you might get a little nervous and that might show a little bit, but really that will come with time. So just keep practicing, do rehearsals. And then in those rehearsals, you might wanna see like I'm moving around all over the place or I'm just standing like this. That's an opportunity. You're that the visual that people are gonna be seeing as they watch you is just as important as what you're saying. This is also an opportunity to be vulnerable with your audience. Let them know that you are genuinely nervous. Other people that are listening to you, they could possibly feel the same way. And it's a great way of automatically connecting with many members in the audience. Another tip is many speakers stay in the audience until it's their time to go up, focusing all their efforts on the other speakers and staying connected with those in the audience. This could also take care of a lot of pre-speech jitters yeah. and allow you to really focus on other things than what you're about to do in I your love speech. That. Next, you wanna plan your multimedia. In today's technologically driven age, you feel the need sometimes to actually have some slides. 
However, these slides don't need to have your full speech on there. Once again, no one likes it if you're just reading word for word. It's like, oh my gosh, we can't read? Take it as just an opportunity to have something to complement what you're actually going to talk about. And with this, more isn't necessarily better. Mm -hmm. You can just have a few pictures here and there timed at key moments as part of your delivery and your presentation. I think of Steve Jobs, whenever he would do a big keynote for a new product release, he didn't have the words all on the screen. He would just, he, you would be focusing on him and his mm -hmm. message and what he was saying. And then at the key moment, there's something new would pop up on the screen with very little text. So take cues from your favorite presenters and take notes, break it down. If you wanna be the best, learn from the best. Another tip is, some some of the most engaging speakers, they build silence into their talks. That gives the audience that opportunity to really hang on the edge of their seats at what's coming next. And another thing is, have the mentality that this is not necessarily a speech you have to do, but it's something that you get the opportunity to do. Making sure that you're just allowing people to experience your expertise is a much better way of positioning and framing it in your mind. Yeah, what are you sharing with your audience that you're so excited for them to learn? Our final step, practice, practice, practice. Preparing your talk maybe six months in advance gives you so much time to actually rehearse it and memorize it so you come across as genuine and very well prepared. And if all else fails, just imagine everyone in their underwear. Today we talked about how to give a presentation your audience will love. In the comments below, tell us, what was your favorite tip? And be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you can be notified when our next video drops. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is The Journey.